So now we're going to start with the hexi body. We're going to start by attaching servo horns to the bottom of the hexi body. And in order to do so, we're going to be using the crossed servo horns. These are the ones with the extra piece on each side. And in this case, we're going to be using the small screws from the bag, not the ones included with the servo horns. And we're going to use the second hole from the middle on each side in order to attach these. So we're going to do that now. So once that's complete, the bottom part will have the crossed servos attached at each of the endpoints so that it looks exactly as it does in the instructions. The next step is going to be to mount the controller board to the controller base, so I'm going to put this aside. Here we have the controller board. You've already used this to uh, line the servos for the various legs you've created. And here we have the controller base. And it's important to note that this is actually square and you're going to want to affix it to the board appropriately. It is fairly obvious where the screws should go when you actually set up the board because they can only go in the four corners and you will be putting a medium screw through the bottom up towards the actual controller face so the screw should stick out something like that. Once the screw is through you will affix a nut to it to keep it into place and then repeat for the other four corners. I want to be careful here not to bend or stress the controller board because the components that are on it will not take that very well. There you can see we have affixed the controller board to the actual controller base. You'll notice that uh, even though I sped it up, you'll probably have to back the screws out a little bit uh, and then re-screw them in so that you can get it on without actually bending it too much. This part in particular wants to bend um, since there is the item underneath the electrical connection, or I should say the metal underneath the electrical connection. It does want to bend, but you can get it attached fairly easily and it's important to note that the electrical connectors are um, not on the same side as this that they are in fact uh, in the other direction so now that we have completed attaching the controller board to the controller base we're going to put that aside and we are going to bring back the piece that we used in the previous step and we are going to connect an upright piece, which is this piece here, to the base with the servo horns. Now you'll notice that 
in this particular piece these holes here are off center they're not exactly in the middle these are going to go towards the bottom so the first thing that we're going to do is attach that and as we have in many other cases with the legs we are going to affix that with a medium screw and nut and as before the nut fits in uh, kind of sideways which is slightly difficult in this case but you can see the space for the nut so we put that in and then once we have it in we can affix the medium screw coming through uh, the bottom here and we can screw it in and we're going to do the same for the other side now so you'll see that the screw is there we're going to do the same for over here grab a nut, drop it into place, and then we grab a medium screw, and again, thread it through, oops, of course the nut popped out, I'm going to thread it through the bottom, and once we have that in place, we're going to screw it into place, so now we have the piece coming up out of the base and we are going to put in the other one just like that but we are not going to screw it in just yet so now we have the robot body with the two supporting sides the open end and the closed end what we're going to do is we're going to take the controller board and controller base that we put together in the previous step and we are going to connect it into the body and so the reason that we don't screw this in, again, is so that we have the wiggle room that we need to uh, actually slide this into place. And once we've slid it into place, you'll see that it does fit together in a fairly straightforward manner. So now we can attach this side, which we can most easily do by turning the robot over so that we can uh, then put in the screws. Put in the screws, we're going to slide a nut into place, which uh, is a little difficult, but we can kind of get it to fit in right there, just like that. And when you do that, you're going to want to hold it in place because it has a tendency to pop out. And then you can take a medium screw, thread it through and then screw it into place. Do the same with the other connection at the other side. Again, we're going to try and fit the screw and nut into that particular section as we've done before. So we put the nut into place. Make sure it stays there, and take a medium screw, thread it through, make sure the nut doesn't fall out. And now we have the controller board affixed to the base of the robot. It's important that when you do this, the uh, back of the robot, which is the open end here, gets the USB connector, and the front of the robot gets the electrical battery connector, which is the closed piece. next step is going to be that we are going to affix the top body piece onto the lower portion of the robot and it's fairly obvious but there are slots here and they slot into the two supporting pieces that we just added and so if we go ahead and do that we now have the body of the robot pretty much top and bottom you'll notice that the points line up above and below and there are four spaces for screws, which we will again screw in to attach the top to the bottom, or I should say to the supporting pieces, which are then attached to the bottom.
that the body is complete, we are going to attach a screw to each of the six points where the legs will eventually attach. So we are going to drop a screw through in each case and attach a nut. This will be similar to when we uh, did one of the legs whereby we only affix the nut a little bit and leave the screw hanging. And we're going to do that for each of the various leg connection points. So now we are going to attach the legs to the body of the Hexi robot. In order to do that, we are going to take one of the legs first and foremost and place it next to the Hexi, but we also have to reconnect the battery pack to the side that contains 0, 1, 2, and 3 because we are going to be powering uh, the servo that is attached to the hip joint so that we can make sure that it centers when we attach it to the body. So since we've pulled all the cable through, we're going to want to make sure that we actually get the cable that corresponds to the servo in question. And again, we're going to attach it to 0, 1, 2, or 3. And we are going to make sure that the brown wire is actually facing out when we attach it. So we're going to go ahead and attach it, and you'll hear the servo whir, as you just did. So once we've attached the leg, we're going to take the hip joint and attach it to the body into the servo horn that's present already and it should fit in fairly snug and we want the leg to be facing out straight as it is in this example and once we have it in what we're going to do is then screw the uh, attached screw in the top into the center hole of the leg and once that's in we will have the leg attached but we can also flip over the entire assembly and what we're going to do is put a small screw in the hole on the other side And of course, we're going to do this for all six of the legs to attach to the body. And you'll notice the whirring sound of the servo, and that is because it is attached and centered. And once you have attached the particular leg in question, you will then unplug it from the board and move on to the next one. So now, as you can see, we have all six legs attached to the robot. Now that we have completed attaching the legs to the body, we are going to start work on the head. So the instructions suggest we put this aside in order to um, better work on the head, and I think that's a very good idea, considering that it is now quite big. So I'm going to put that over there and start assembling the head and the first piece called for in the head is this semicircular piece and the second piece is this one 
and it suggests that this piece be fit into this one with a medium screw and nut as we have been doing with several of the other ones so we're going to go ahead and do that place the nut in the appropriate spot and thread the screw through go ahead and screw that into place Once we have that in place, the next pieces we're going to use are going to be the face plate as well as the actual sensor that it uses for eyes. And we are going to place this over the sensor like so. Uh, it actually seems to go better in one direction than the other, so uh, don't force it. But uh, if you find that it does fit better over one side, then that's what it should be. And you'll notice that Hexi now has a face. And the next step, of course, is going to be to um, actually put these two pieces together. So if we do that, we are going to find that uh, Hexi will have a head. In order to do that, we are going to take the piece that we just built, which you'll notice has uh, the slots for nuts and screws, and we are going to go ahead and attach the two of them, and then screw it into place. next pieces that we are going to use are going to be this piece and a servo as we have been doing with servos all the time we are going to slot this one into place the instructions suggest that the tabs on the servo should fit on the top so it would probably make the most sense to slide it down and when you do that you may notice that the sticker will come off uh, that's a interesting little phenomenon but anyway we can put the servo in let's see what happens if we use a different servo and the stickers will come out of the it doesn't make a big difference but it seems like it's uh, worth keeping everything the same and in this case the wire for the servo should be coming out of the back end of this particular piece so we can slot this piece in, and no matter what happens, it seems to take the stickers off, so uh, that's just going to be something that we'll have to live with. So once we have that in place, we are going to then attach a small screw where the servo meets the plastic piece. Now we are going to attach a straight servo horn to the underside of the head. Uh, in this case, again, we're going to use the small screws provided and we're going to put it into the second of the tiny holes from the middle on each side. And we're again going to use the small screws that um, come in the bag, not the small screws that come with the servo horns. So let's go ahead and do that. Screw into place first. It gets a little easier to do it that way. screws in place, we can go ahead and attach it to the underside of 
the hexy head. So next we are going to affix the head to the servo that we just put together. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to power the servo as we've done with the other servos. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the battery to the robot body where the uh, board is. And once we do that, we can center the servo. So let's go ahead and do that, remembering to keep the brown wire out. And once we have that plugged in, you'll hear a brief whir as the servo centers, and then we can connect the robot head to that servo and try and keep it in the middle, which isn't the easiest in the world, but we'll do that. So once we've done that, oops, then we are going to uh, affix them together with a small screw that goes right in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Trying to get it centered, of course, is the trickiest part. So if you look at it from the top, it's clearly not centered. So get it as centered as possible. fix a small screw. So drop the screw in there and then tighten it. And now we have the hexy head. Going to disconnect that next and then disconnect the batteries. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to attach the head to the body. Uh, in order to do that, we are going to be attaching it to the body piece directly above the battery plug here. So we can see that we have these holes here and the battery piece here. That's where we're going to connect the actual headpiece. So the headpiece will mount with medium screws directly onto the top of the robot body. So if we go ahead and do that, we can thread through two screws. And of course, we will need the corresponding nuts on the other side in order to hold this into place. And once we have the screws through, we can sort of lift the robot a little bit, making sure to hold the head in place and attach the nuts on the other side. Oops, which is a little difficult because it has to go underneath. But once we've done that, we get the into place here, screw it on a little bit. Do the same thing with the other side. You'll notice that the head and line is actually shaking around a little bit. This screw in the back here that attaches the neck to the head does not actually fit into the circular hole it's supposed to. Um, so it's very loose and I'm not quite sure what that's going to mean for the finished product, but for now I'm going to continue following the instructions and we'll see what happens. I can always glue it into place later if I need to. 
So I'm essentially just tightening the screws that I have already added here. And then we'll go from there. So now the head is attached to the body, as you can see here. But again, technically, this piece is not attached because the screw doesn't hold it into place. So I'm not sure what I'll do with that, um, depending on what its requirements are, but it does look like I'll have to glue it into place in order so that it actually sticks because this screw here, this one right here, does not hold this into place. So now that we have the head attached to the body, the uh, task that we have to perform next is actually to wire the legs through the center and to attach them to the appropriate ports on the actual robot. The connection diagram in the instructions indicates that obviously uh, the head is in the front and so the legs correspond to left front, left middle, and then left back, and then on the other side right front, right middle, and right back. And there are holes in the center which are difficult to see here, but the concept is going to be that we're going to thread all the wires from the legs through those holes to give the robot a cleaner look. Now, uh, since we have previously already threaded the wires through the top of the legs uh, when we built the legs, it's going to be a little easier. We just have to make sure that we correspond the appropriate wire uh, with the appropriate port and they're labeled in the diagram. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So in each case, each servo has a number in the diagram. So on the left front leg, we have five, six, and seven. And those will correspond with the appropriate ports on the controller. So we're gonna go ahead and connect those. So uh, let's go ahead and first thread the wires through. Which again, is a little tricky, but can be done. So you just pull them through and make sure that you get it all the way through and get the third one through as well. So now we have the wires coming out of the top of the leg and then coming out of the body here as well. And then we can attach them as we should. So let's see, the trick again of course will be to attach them in the order in which they are supposed to be attached. The Directions obviously suggest that if they are attached incorrectly, they will have some uh, negative effects on how the robot moves at the end. One of the tricks I learned in my old cabling days is you can pull on the wire in both sides to make sure that the wire you're actually uh, using is the correct one. So this is number five. So I'm going to connect this to the fifth port, which you probably won't be able to see too well, but zero, one, two, three, four, five. I do not have the batteries connected for this. Uh, so then the next one should be six, which means that the one that I'm pulling on will not be. So this is number six. And then this is number seven. And again, remembering that the brown wire goes to the outside. Okay, so that's the first leg done. Now to do the rest of the legs. Okay. Uh, for the second leg, it's worth noting that the servos in question are not going to be 8, 9, and 10, but 9, 10, and 11. And then for the subsequent leg, 13, 14, and 15, so it looks like we're skipping one in each section, skipping the top connector on the board in each section. So that's one side done. So now we're going to start the other side. And it's again worth noting that when you look at the instructions, the 
numbers that correspond to the particular servos on the controller board for the ports start at the back, not at the front. So we went 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, but we do not start up here. We now have 16, 17, and 18 in the back, and then 20, 21, and 22, and then 24, 25, and 26. So again, we're going to thread the wires through the center hole of the body so that the robot looks good and can move without too many problems, which is, a, of course, one of the ideal situations here. So we're going to thread these through. It's a little trickier, but we can do it. And then we're going to attach them as we've done before. Okay, so now we have all of the legs attached to the controller board. One last thing to connect is the neck servo. That gets connected to port 31. One other thing I noticed that while I was connecting the legs to the board, uh, you can often just go by the length of the wire that's available to you while connecting. The longest available wire will connect to the um, port closest to the USB, and then obviously the middle one in the middle, and the shortest goes on the top, but the uh, next servo has to be connected to port 31. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the battery shelf to the underside of the robot. Uh, I personally don't think this step should be last, but um, this would be much easier if we could actually put the robot down, but we can't because of the head. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to affix this with three sets of medium screws and nuts as per the directions. So we can go ahead and uh, thread, this through, thread the screws through to hold it into place. You obviously have to hold the robot with the other hand, and then we can sort of um, hold that in place with one hand and then attempt to fit the nuts on with the other. Oops, of course, if you drop the nut, it gets a little difficult, but and this would be much easier if the robot head were not attached. So I think it would be something for them to fix in the future. Uh, or you can just go ahead and do this step before you actually attach the robot head, which would make it much easier. And so, I don't know how you're supposed to get the nut in there. It's actually inside the robot leg. I guess you can kind of push the legs aside, but it's going to be very difficult to get that onto the screw. do it with a little deftness and then it's just a matter of doing the last screw over here Trying to get the screw on, or the, sorry, the nut onto the screw with very little room to maneuver because the robot's legs are in the way. You can kind of put this nut next to the screw and flip it on, and then once it's on, of course, it's going to be much easier to actually affix these because now we can just. 
hold the nut in place and screw the screw in. Of course, again, you have to be careful because you can't actually put the robot down because the robot's head would come flying off, which we definitely do not want. And now that the battery shelf is on, we have completed the instructions for building the robot. So now we have a fully built robot. It has head, a body, and six legs.